He was working on some stuff. I mean, we have talked, probably we talked like once a month, um, Laura and I, and the last time we talked, she felt, and she was working with other people, not necessarily just Joe, like Casperson, and I'm trying to remember the, the other center, I think it was Coldwell. Um, so there's been a lot of other stuff going on though because after Prop 1 didn't pass now everybody's like trying to figure out how to uh, fund our transportation system and so that's been kind of the, I think the hot topic basically and the oil drilling is kind of I think taking a back, um, back seat to itself. So, but I do support local control and um, that actually came up out of, I think we talked about this actually last time I was in Manchester. That, um, for me that came up out of the gravel mine that was proposed north of Chelsea okay. and the fact that um, there was limited ability to, for local input. And so that was something that we were uh, trying to uh, make sure that we had more local input. Again, it's kind of this, we, we have the same legislation from last term. question is whether or not it would be productive to introduce it. We were talking about on and off about introducing it, but I would like to find out, to make it bipartisan. Yeah, so, and my understanding is it is a bipartisan issue that yeah, uh, both sides, that, that, that's what they tell us to talk about is local control because right. both sides agree with that. Yeah, they kind of do, but they kind of don't. <laughs> so, so in Lansing, we just passed a bill to deny local control for uh, communities to pass local <coughs> ordinances. Like, for example, in some communities around the country, they're requiring uh, paid sick leave for uh, the workers in the communities, like in Philadelphia and San Francisco. And, so what's been happening, uh, and recently there was a bill that actually went through that, took away a lot of ability for local government to do local control. So it's kind of, it seems like it's when it's convenient, to be honest with you, <laughs> is what's happening. So that, again, the oil drilling is one of those that we're going to try, mm -hmm. but um, that's about all. But I guess what I, you know, number one, I personally feel local communities know best for their what their community wants, and there are communities like Saline Township is perfectly open to doing drilling and seems to be interested in doing that. It's a much more rural community versus uh, there's several townships like Sio Township. Uh, I know there's a lot of people in this area that are very concerned about it, and you know I don't I there. I think you know, we need to access natural resources. I don't think that is the issue. The issue is more how do we protect uh, people's property values and the environment and personal people's health. And I know that's been a problem in some of the locations where they, um, you know, I have a friend that actually lives in Saline Township and she said there's certain days she can't go out in her backyard and it's just, you know, and it's not on her property, right? But so how close those is she to the oil? How close is she to the I don't know. I, I don't know if you've met her. She's come. Uh, Miss Lori in Arborster. I don't know if you've ever talked to her. Do you know Lori? I don't know. Maybe I have, but I don't know it. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. I think she came, I can't remember what it was. She came to a coffee, or it was the Manchester town. I don't try to remember. She came to something, though, because we were talking about it. And but, but it seems as though sometimes when you travel down the US 12, or between Saline and Maine, just, you can smell it. I mean, even with the windows closed. So it just yeah. it depends on the wind yeah. or whatever. And, and it seems as though there was a berm at one time um, in front of one of those drilling that you can see right off the road. And now there's not, and I kind of wonder. No berm or no drill? No, no berm. Yeah. Which seems yeah. weird, yeah. but <laughs> to take away a berm. But maybe I was wrong. Maybe I'm just dreaming <laughs> once again. So, I mean, I think it is a continual challenge, and it's something that we need to I appreciate. So what's happened in Manchester Township, the Planning Commission? The Planning Commission voted to not pass a, an oil drilling, oil and gas drilling moratorium. They're, they're recommending to the board that the board, so it's really the board that votes, but the Planning Commission recommends to the board. And the reason they stated that they did that is that they felt a moratorium would cost them money to uh, draw up the papers which is really not valid because the same company that did it for Sio Township could just like change a few Manchester Sio Township, it wouldn't cost that much money. They also felt that it wouldn't stand up in court. They basically also feel that uh, landowners should be able to cut their wood on their land, get sand and gravel, do all that stuff, that they should be able to drill for oil as well. They just don't seem, they. The MDEQ came and gave a presentation, which was, in my opinion, rather whitewashed about mm -hmm. how safe and everything is. And 
I do think the MDAQ does have a lot of regulations and safety protocols, but I think there's also a lot of problems with that. Mm -hmm. And but they just were just enamored with the MDEQ and all this stuff. And so they just basically are not concerned that it's a problem at all. And that, was that uh, unanimous or? It was unanimous on the planning commission. So the board, as far as I know, has not voted on it yet. I think they might vote on it at the next, in the July township board meeting. So you went to, Brian, you went to the Suicog meeting too? Did, did they yes. talk about the they did. No. You know, the SWECOG group, which is the council, the regional planning group here, that might be another group for you guys to go talk we did. to. We did go talk to them. And actually, I thought she might be talking about it because I had given Pat Valancourt the, this article on it that was in the Crazy Wisdom Journal on Laura Robinson and Kofi. And so she said, oh, I'm going to take this to my meeting, but apparently she didn't. Maybe she meant the village council. Oh, that's right, she did. It was Monday night. So the village council, and then there's a group of a, re a representative from Man village, the Manchester village, and then other surrounding townships. Right. They meet uh, on Thursday, the yeah. second Thursday of every other. We yeah. went to that meeting. Okay, you did. Oh, Wednesday, second Wednesday of every month. Well, if they meet erratically. I mean, every oh. couple months. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's probably the same group because yeah, it's pretty unique. Yeah, it is. I know which one you're talking about because Pat and you were there. And <laughs> and you were saying they were talking about doing a joint pl uh, planning. Plan. Right. So it might be a very good conversation to continue to have with them yeah. um, that, you okay. know, as part of this joint planning commission to really think mm -hmm. about how to address, you know, oil drilling in the region. Mm -hmm. And obviously the tool, having the local tools is, a, is just part of the mm -hmm. issue. Yeah. Um, well, they also... I believe that Dexter's done a moratorium and... Dexter um, has. Sio. And so Washtenaw County yeah. has as well. Pittsfield Township, I yeah. believe, has. Well, what is Sharon Township? Sharon Township has yeah. done a lot of work. So, so right. if, if, if there's one township in that group. Well, there are. Sharon Township's in that. Yeah. This week I've yeah. Been there. So, well, yeah. But again, you know, it's sort of like when I was mayor, you don't, it's like you don't tell your neighbors what to do. I mean, ideally, no. you can work together and have a regional vision. But obviously, Sharon Township doesn't think that it's costly or. The other question I had regarding local control is how Michigan is allowing the fracking waste, the radioactive fracking waste from Pennsylvania to come and be dumped here, and it's being dumped now in the Belleville, Willow Run area dump. And that to me is a travesty, and I don't know if that comes under local control or not. I don't know. Well, I know we, there's another proposed injection well down there. The townships are very upset about it. So there's eight of those injection wells in the Lenaway area, yeah. Lenaway County, Adrian area. Those are supposed to just be for brine, which isn't as bad as fracking waste from, you know, radioactive material. But still, it's not so great. Right. Right. So you're are you working on this fracking? The fracking is there going to be a ballot proposal? Is there is actually. Well, there is. There's hope to be a ballot proposal. There's the ban fracking petition where they're trying to get enough signatures. Patty's got it. She's doing it. I will be doing. I don't have mine yet, but I will be doing it, collecting signatures to put it on the ballot. So that's one area that we're working on. But again, I'm not really. I'm not I'm as out front as I was last year because. Um, I'm a little bit more pragmatic. Like I was, I think I mentioned to somebody that were at the last coffee that I had here that I was on the transportation committee last year, and I kind of realized that sometimes there's different ways of getting a resolution to something, and sometimes it means working with somebody else and having them do the bill. So um, that's kind of what. So I'm not on transportation, and I'm not on commerce. Those are the two committees I was on last year, and partly for the reasons that I mentioned. Like the first, one of the first things we did in commerce last year was, you know do a bill that took away the ability for communities to, you know, have local ordinances that would, you know, have reasonable, wa reasonable wages, like, you know, so that whole paid, uh, earned sick leave, paid sick leave thing that people around the country are addressing as a problem, you know, that we don't, uh, for people that work more than 30 hours a week should be able to, you know, get earned sick leave. So that's something, um, we have reintroduced that as a Democratic caucus, but again, because we're not in majority, I think that's challenging. 
Um, so the things that I'm working on still is the rural broadband that we've talked about. It's kind of like, it's pretty slow and frustrating to be honest with you, but we're, we're still plugging away trying to find opportunities. The good news is that we have a new committee just on communications and technology. So we're doing some work with broadband and I've been trying to, um, which broadband is the same thing as internet access, high speed internet access. Um, I'm trying to get um, the chair, the way the mapping is done in the state and actually in the country doesn't show where there are, are holes in, in the service. And so we're trying to change that. And so there's some opportunities here in this next year to do that. But again, it's kind of, so there's the part about defining the market, which we've already done, and then there's the part about bringing forward providers. So the good part is we are working, you know, providers say, well, regulation, government regulations make it too hard, zoning, whatever. So the people, some of the townships in uh, Washtenaw County are working on updating their zoning regulations so when the provider comes in, it would be easier to provide that service. And then there's a pr uh, group that's working on doing like a co-op park, it's called Pure Broadband, that is working on actually having a cooperative that would help uh, get in the internet here in the, the district. The challenge is that I, I'm a little concerned about it because I think it's going to take a long time and so I'm still trying to find stuff at the state level to get going. So I've been introducing some of the things. Um, Minnesota has a long-range strategic plan for implementing rural uh, last mile internet and I think it would be great if Michigan were very similar states and I think it's a you know, this is a really big issue for our uh, citizens. It's, it affects property value, it affects the ability to provide good um, <coughs> public education now. A lot of people do research, you know, on the internet to, in order to do their homework or even online, you know, education. I mean, there's so many different reasons why we need to have uh, high-speed internet in your home and um, so and reliable. And I know the wireless is, and AT&T tends to be going with the wireless, but there's data caps and uh, speed reliability and things like that that are challenging with wireless. So that's kind of still, it's, it's very slow moving. <laughs> but I'm working on that and then. Is that a matter of who, who's gonna pay for it? Yeah, kind of. I mean, basically the favorite providers seem like, I mean, Frontier says they're coming out this way. They, um, I met with some uh, folks down in, Runaway County that are doing actually fiber up to Clinton, which I, is right on the border, you know, so I was all excited about that coming over into Washtenaw and, you know, maybe they will, but again, it's kind of like, it's taken a while, it's, it's pretty frustrating, but that's kind of government, it takes a while, the, the really important things do take a while, um, but I am really trying to keep the pressure on my chair um, and, and making sure that the Connect Michigan program was a really strong program and has done a lot so far, but we have a lot more work to do as far as making getting providers here. And so there is some work on doing that. Um, but like I met with like AT and T and Comcast, and like Comcast only goes when there's a subdivision of 150 houses or more. So they really don't work in rural areas very well. And AT and T's doing towers, but most of them are closer to Ann Arbor, and they're not really um, there's not really enough service through AT&T here. So part of, the, part of it is identifying where the gaps are, which we've done that with the survey, and now it's trying to find the providers that would be interested in making investment here. I have a question. Mm -hmm. We have Frontier that runs right, we live on Bethel Church Road. Mm -hmm. They've installed a line a couple years ago, and but we can't get Frontier. And they said that the reason why they ran the line was from Grass Lake to Celine. But you can't get it? We can't get it. Okay, well, it's Frontier. To, when, when, um, I don't know, do you have a sign in? Um, I don't, for sure. I don't. Um, I, I'm just throwing it out there. I mean, you don't have to get well, back we can, to me. We can try just, to find out why that it's is. It's sort of crazy, though, that it would connect Grass Lake to Celine, but not include Manchester, you know? Yeah, and then the other thing is there is a lot of dark fiber out there, which means that there's fiber, but it's not being accessed. So that might be okay. maybe some of that's in there. Um, I'm not just sure. hearing that the, the broadband group is working on it is the fiber is, map. Mm -hmm. Is the fiber map and accessing some of that dark fiber? It's, okay. it's kind of tricky because you know this is a competitiveness issue. So the providers don't really want to share where their fiber is, especially the bigger providers. But at the same time, then we can't access it if we don't know where it is. So it's this really kind of tricky environment right now that we're in. But you know, we're keep plugging away, and mm -hmm. you know, we know it's important. And um, I'm making sure that all the legislators 
at least our committee, uh, and they're, I think they're on that committee because everybody has folks that don't have service or have very li limited service. I mean, we actually have recently been apprised of this group that's been meeting, um, said that they have had people that said they had to move because they couldn't work from their home because they, they had to do you know, big data loads and they couldn't get ac enough access to the um, internet at their home. So it's really becoming a big issue. Um, so I'm working on that and then I'm on the agricultural committee, that's the other committee I'm on and that's actually been very interesting. You know, in Washington County we have a very strong food uh, system and a lot of uh, a lot of innovation around uh, lo local uh, food to take, you know, farm to table, um, local foods, a lot of good stuff going with farmers mm -hmm. markets and, and um, working with the public schools and getting, you know, uh, local foods in the public school systems and things like that. So. Um, that's been pretty interesting uh, committee to be on. I've learned a lot. It's been pretty cool. But anyway, I learned all about the avian flu, which has been pretty you know, challenging. We're basically surrounded by it in here in Michigan. We don't have it yet, and so the uh, folks, all the breeders, are basically not attending any fairs. They're not bringing their birds off the property. So in case there is uh, something happens here in the state, it will be very much minimized. So they've been doing a really great job of um, controlling that because that could be really challenging for the, for the birds, not for us. But, mm -hmm. You know, they, their populations just go and they're just totally wiped out. So, so I've been learning a lot about the different parts of egg, and you know, I've been to the Hornings Dairy Farm. I don't know if any of you guys have ever been there, but it's pretty awesome, and um, you know, it's a really important economic sector. So, those are the committees I'm on, and some of the things that we did this week was we voted on a, a road package that I voted against because. It um, was kind of like a fake fix, basically. Um, so we kind of did the same thing last year. It's very frustrating. Um, we basically, the fix is to take money from the general fund when we already have a mechanism for generating revenue, which is called the gas tax. And, um, you know, <laughs> so we're not addressing it. We're taking money from the general fund of potential future growth. That's partly... Then we're taking money from economic development, which I don't support. I think we do need to have economic development programs. That's really important. That's how we compete with other states, by having economic development programs. Up here in Michigan, is a great, it's actually one of the leading, it's the number one tourist program in the country. It's gotten uh, national awards, um, and there's potential high cuts to that. Um, and tourism, you know, our top three economic sectors are um, <coughs> that manufacturing, uh, agriculture and tourism; those are our top three economic industries. So, when we're talking about cutting 